Hi, and thank you for joining Urban Disrupt, your address for social innovation. We are happy to have Josef Abramowitz with us, co-founder of Energia Global and Arva Power, also known as Captain Sunshine. Josef nominated by CNN as one of the six top green pioneers all over the world. Thank you for joining us, Josef. Thank you. After a career as an educator and social activist, you moved to Israel with your family in 2006 and set on a new path. Tell us about this transition and how it plays a role in the energy solar field today. It's an interesting question. Right? I, was, I was an educator and, and activist, and if you ask me what's the point of education, it's that we should not just learn for the sake of learning, but learn for the sake of doing. And um, I always saw my education and activism link, that you're educating people to, to be active in the world and to really heal the world in any which way that their passions can lead them. Mm -hmm. When we thought about solar power, uh, my partners and I, Ed Hoffman and David Rosenblatt, mm -hmm. we thought, well, maybe it'll be a nonprofit. We were we were centered in the Arafa Institute for Environmental Studies, a, you know, an NGO, and we did the back of the envelope calculations. Like, oh wait, we'd have to raise ten billion dollars to get Israel to go solar. That's not going to work. Therefore, we need a business plan that is good for investors, but that also accomplishes bringing commercial scale solar energy to be a big part of Israel's uh, energy footprint. I'm sure that operating in various regions that you are active in also bring on some challenges. Tell us about some of the key challenges your company is dealing with and also how are you overcoming those challenges? You have to make deals with governments and utilities and if they haven't done solar power before, it, it, it seems like some fictional or science fiction, um, or maybe it's only for the rich countries and the sophisticated countries. So that's one. Two is we also have to really understand the uniqueness of each country. And there always are cultural differences and sensitivities. Um, the third is how do we work in a way that de-risks the market, because a solar field can cost a lot of money. What I think it all comes down to, and this is probably true for any kind of entrepreneurship, but entrepreneurship cross-cultural, mm -hmm. it's about trust. It's about the speed to trust. When we come in and we try to do a deal, we actually have some unusual conditions. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and those unusual conditions actually get their attention. Um, would be like negotiating with an energy minister or a president or a, vice president or prime minister. And you kind of do the introduction of the idea, this is what we're looking for, this is how we can be helpful, this is what the government needs to do, this is what we would do. And at a certain point they want to end the meeting. But then we go, well, we have three more conditions. And you can see them go, oh no, here comes like, we're going to get screwed. Basically that's, that's their fear. And, and there is a fear of that that they're going to be taken advantage of. And they go, okay, what's the first condition? Well, the first condition is that if we, you let us do a large enough solar field, would it be okay that we gave scholarships to qualified students from your country to come to Israel for a semester or a year to learn solar power so we've done a knowledge transfer and go back? And they're like, they look at you, wait, what? That, that's your condition? That, that's, that should be my condition. And then they want to know, okay, what's the second condition? And we'll go, well, we'd really like to know of an orphanage in the area that we're working in or, or, or a school that we can help support. And again, they're like, that's kind of a strange business condition. It's like, yeah, like it, like it won't, won't be so much money, but it, we have an obligation. And they go, what's the third condition? Because at this point, it's getting more unusual. And I go, well, we're not going to bring that many people from Israel, actually. Is, can we have help finding qualified subcontractors in the following uh, fields so that we can train them locally and, and keep as many of the jobs locally? And they're like, why do you do that? Like, like, like who are you crazy people, essentially? They don't say it that way, but that's what they're thinking. You mentioned before something about the profit model. Can you please expand a little bit about the profit model and how it is appealing to your investors? The way investments have been thought about traditionally mm -hmm. is I want to deploy this kind of capital and get this kind of return. Our investors want to make money, which is great because it's a really good economic model, but they also want to make money in a way that is consistent with their values. They don't compromise actually on their financial expectations. But they, they just want to make sure that we're doing good things in the world with their money, 
rather than doing bad things in the world with, 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 with their money. And so um, the nature of the business is a known business model. Again, it's, it's, they do it in Europe, and we brought it to the state of Israel. And in many parts of the world, we're, we're also cheaper than, than other, other forms of energy. So when we go to a government and we say, would you like to work together in solar power? They just want to make sure that they're not overpaying. And we show them how they save money with solar power. We build a commercial scale solar field, and we sell the electricity at a profit mm -hmm. to the utility or to the state. And there's a guarantee on that. That's good business. Energy is good business. The, 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 the energy needs of every country is just the demand is increasing and the demand is there in the world. And that's the business model. When you take on a project, you're not only developing your own business, but you're also developing the communities that you're working with. Can you expand on this process? We felt Rwanda was important to build there because they, 20, years or so after the genocide. They're, they're coming literally from darkness to light. But who's our partner in Rwanda? Our partner is the Agahoza Shalom Youth Village, which is a youth village founded by a friend of mine, Anne Heyman. And she had a vision of an Israeli modeled youth village for orphans from the genocide. So there's 500 orphans at Agahoza Shalom Youth Village. And so to partner with an NGO and a values-based for-profit, us, seemed like there's a natural fit there. And they had land that they were not using. So we're, we're, we were able to do a deal with the youth village that not only are they getting revenue for the next 20 years from the solar field that covers the healthcare costs of all 500 orphans, which is an amazing thing, we're also giving training um, to the students on solar power that when they graduate, that they should be able to either start their own businesses or work for other people to install solar panels, either on a commercial basis, on big fields, or even just home base. This is the future of Africa. As we can see, this is a solar field that you recently completed in Rwanda in partnership with Gigawatt Global. Can you expand about the project? So Gigawatt Global is a Dutch-based developer. Uh, that's what Chaim Mussen works for. He's the one who headed the project. And w where you're in today, this is an area global. We're the uh, research and development uh, arm of the Dutch developer. And so we assess markets, we do the seed funding, uh, we do a lot of the uh, pre-engineering and planning. So this is the R&D center for the uh, solar revolution. Where do you see the company going in the next five to 10 years? And also, what are some of the goals that you set out for the company? We want to build as many commercial scale solar fields uh, where they're needed in the world as possible. We have a goal of 10,000 megawatts. What I would hope is that we, have, we would have opened so many new markets, not only to us, but also for other solar developers to follow in our footsteps so that the people in each of these countries, they get a multiplier effect of investments coming in from outside and jobs created and green energy. But we would like to be the, recognized as the leading solar developer in the, in the developing world. Yosef, you're working on projects all over the world. You are the definition of global. Please give us one key advice to other entrepreneurs that are trying to go global with a triple bottom line. First advice, learn as much as you can from your first experience, get it right, work out the kinks, de-risk, and then leverage those learnings uh, before you go out into the world. Um, there's a whole range of financial kind of advice that you can get from a lot of people and books and seminars and conferences, but one thing I want to say to entrepreneurs is that you really have to know what you believe in. What are your core values? Because those values are going to be tested. There's going to be some real challenges and, and there'll be days that you don't want to get out of bed and there's going to be times where you think it's going to die and you're going to have to just like get out there and fight for what you believe in as if it's like the most important cause on the planet. And so make sure you know what, what, what values are worth fighting for and, that's, and you're bringing those to, to, to you every day. And the second is have a vision towards what you want to build towards. Um, it, it's, it's important, not just from a business planning, but that vision can help inspire you also during the challenging times. And then find investors and strategic partners who share your vision so that you're all also going to a particular place. So when the going gets tough, 
you, you're, you're with the right team, you're with the right team. But without core foundational values that are going to be tested, it's hard to succeed. Yosef, thank you again for being with us today. That has been a pleasure. And thank you guys for joining us on Urban Disrupt, your address for social innovation. See you next time.